It's official. I've decided none of my tomatoes are getting planted deeply this year, and there's quite a few reasons for it, and most of them result in pretty major results for my climate. It is currently raining outside, so we're gonna hang out in here for a little while before going outdoors, because it's supposed to stop eventually. Although I will say, as as a ginger, this is the best weather for us. It helps us prevent against extinction. So, save a ginger through donating to cloud seeding research. Seriously. Alrighty folks, we're gonna get into tomatoes and more specifically, what depth to plant said tomatoes in because there's a big debate out there. I did a video on how I transplanted or bumped them up into larger sized pots and it caused absolute anarchy in the comment section. And so today we're gonna look at how to plant them outdoors, what this will affect. It'll affect how well the tomato is obviously supported it will affect your nutrient and just your root function in general and the depth you planted at also will affect your nutrient uptake lastly it's going to affect the time of harvest when you can actually physically get a harvest off of your tomatoes spoiler alert sinking them to the hilt is actually probably delaying your harvest the answer probably is somewhere in between this this is why I have to transplant outside. I grew this from seed. Yes, I started them later than everyone else. I need to get this on camera because I don't think anyone's going to believe me. What were you just going to say? I can't believe that this was a couple of weeks ago that we had planted. Thank you. <laughs> am I good at growing or am I good at growing? Do I have tomatoes already? Yes. You don't want to believe me and you want to continue just ripping all the leaves off and planting it two feet in the ground, go ahead, I don't care. And all, in all seriousness, if that's what you like, just do it, just go do it. If you said on the internet that that's what you do, you know, someone's gonna praise you for it and then the other half of the internet's gonna eat you a lot. That's the internet. In that video, I had said that I don't transplant my tomatoes at the very bottom, so I don't sink them. The reason for that is because the sinking of them lower actually causes your adventitious, tetious, not tetious, the way I was pronouncing it, tetious, 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 tetious. Those roots that develop from being sunk in lower, whether it's outdoors or inside of your container when you go to bump up, is stress induced roots. And that you can try to fight me on. That's a fact. Adventitious roots are stress-induced roots, meaning the plant is stressed out and putting energy into making roots that can help them alleviate said stress. Is this a bad thing? No, I'm just saying that it's redirecting valuable energy into making roots that you may not need. So a great example of this, I have one tomato plant that has adventitious roots inside of just a regular pot the reason for it i got it from a greenhouse and it was in too small of a container and it was a giant beautiful plant um and it has it has stress induced roots it has the adventitious warts showing up on the outside the rest of my plants they don't have that um because like they're just not stressed out i I keep them watered so they don't tend to get those adventitious roots because they have no reason to get those adventitious roots. The depth in which you plant your tomatoes is completely dependent on the soil type you have, the garden bed you're working with, and the physical tomato itself. So number one, your physical soil. The soil, if it is a sandier soil, is going to get warmer. If it is a clay soil, it is going to be cooler. Meaning a sandier soil, you may wanna consider planting the plant deeper. A clay soil, you may wanna consider planting it higher. The only way you're ever gonna find this out is if you get a soil temp thermometer and you test the temperatures of your soil. If you wanna guesstimate, you can. This is still cold. A good barometer, if you didn't want to get a soil temp probe is to feel a potting soil in the heat of the sun about halfway into the container versus this. If you have hands that are good at sensing temperature, this is a little bit cooler 
what I'm going to do to help this guy out just a little bit, reduce the transplant shock, is I'm going to take sun warmed water and pop it into this hole. In a clay soil setting, if you notice that things are just really cold still, what you need to look at is whether or not you have mulch on top of your soil. And then if you do, removing that, because mulch in the spring or mulch that was left over the winter is an insulator. So it's actually keeping that soil cool, which in you know, hotter climates absolutely makes sense. If you're in California or Kansas or, you know, the U.S. And actually there's a lot of Americans on this channel. And that's why I say that, like a lot of Americans and I love them. You guys are awesome. So the removal of mulch is going to speed up the heating process. If your soil is super hot, maybe consider putting some mulch on to the soil to help bring that temperature down. If you put mulch on and things still aren't heating up, you can consider solarization of that soil to get things going a little bit quicker. And I have a whole video on that right here if you wanna check that out. But that would be used in extreme circumstances where you don't have much sun and you have a heavy clay soil and things are still looking frozen, which my beds until like two, three, four weeks ago were still frosted because I like dug down and it looked like crystallized ice cream. I tasted it, it's, it's not very good, but yeah. So we know the soil temp, sandier soil is going to warm up quicker. I personally have a sandy loam soil in majority of my beds. A clay soil is much, much uh, longer time to heat up. Now, number, two factor is going to be the type of bed or situation that the tomato's in. So a smaller container, a smaller black container, those all are going to warm up much more than say a larger raised bed. Now a larger raised bed, you can get wood, you can get metal and you can get an insulated metal. So I don't think I'd be too concerned with that unless it's in like direct sun and then you may wanna look into checking that out. That's factor number two. Small containers are going to be warmer than in ground. In ground is gonna be your coolest, hands down, regardless of soil type is going to be cold compared to something that's above ground. So we know soil type matters. We know container size and look also matters versus in ground. Second thing to consider, what is your tomato doing? If your tomato has decided to go completely rogue, like this one has, you probably don't want to force this to go straight up and you may want to consider just planting it. Planting it the way she lays. Give her a little bit of support. I did a video on this. It was pretty low key, not a lot of editing. Bullshit on the internet, like most of my videos are. Um, so this would be an example of a plant that I wouldn't force and I would plant right here. This would all be in the ground because that's what it's doing. I don't want to force it. I don't want to hurt said plant or crack anything. Now, if your plant is straight up and down, that is wonderful. In this plant, I'm going to plant the way I want to. And if you don't want to plant it the way I'm planting it, then don't. So, this is one of my plants that I planted closer to the surface. You can see my little cotyledons still hanging out there. I know for a fact that all of the roots inside of here are the natural native root cells. So the roots that are meant to be roots and live as roots and hang out as roots. And in this, I have a big old taproot, which is going to help me with a drought and is going to continue just powering into that soil along with the fibrous root systems that come off of said taproot. So the adventitious roots will eventually turn into a fibrous root system. They help with support um, and they do capture some nutrients in some water. They are not as effective as the root system. That's just a fact. If you want an earlier harvest on your tomatoes and you don't want to cause stress-induced roots, you want to put the roots in the right temperature zone. So this is where a soil temp thermometer comes in. If you have a soil that is on the warmer side, even on the hot side for some of you, you want to sink it. Now, you don't want to sink it you know, up to here because I've seen that. Ideally, you would sink it only up to the first true leaf where that is actually a hot soil where they saw the benefit of sinking these a little bit deeper. They did to the cotyledon and they did it to the first true leaf. 
They didn't find um, like major differences, but it's definitely something to consider if you, you stick the temperature probe in and you find that it's actually cooler if you were to sink it to here, then do that. You're going to benefit greatly from that compared to just planting these on the surface, okay? So that is number one. If you are in Canada, if you are in a shithole like I am, Saskatchewan, that never warms up. Just kidding, I love Saskatchewan. Very shortly, there's going to be a law in Saskatchewan uh, that will state that- Every person watching Gardening in Canada has to hit the subscribe button. If you can do that, you're definitely part of the Geek Crew. If you're in a soil system that is cooler, maybe it's a, in more shade, than the rest of your garden. Maybe it's in ground and some of your containers are above ground. You need to use some common sense here and plant these accordingly. You have, you have a container garden and you're in Canada or the US. I would say it doesn't matter what temperature you're in or what your summers look like, I would likely sink this to the first true leaf. This one right here, cotyledons, first leaf sticking out. I would sink it to here. If you're going in ground and you're in a cooler climate, you dig down and it feels cool to the touch, do not plant it there because you are going to delay your harvest of your tomatoes. Not only does your tomato have to wait and deal with a cooler root system and wait till things warm up in those lower levels, they also now have to send out adventitious roots, stress-induced roots, which <laughs> it's just taking energy away and it's not it you got a plant that's not uptaking the nutrients and water it needs because the water it or it's not taking it up effectively because the soil's too cold you combine that with the fact that that plant now has to send out adventitious roots it's delaying your harvest so what you want to do is actually plant it closer to the surface um if your plant is not supported and it's not like strong like this then sink it lower to give it that support. What's more stressful is improper support over the adventitious roots, in my opinion, because a snap stem on a tomato is a snap stem on a tomato. It's completely useless. So in my grow zone, I'm going to be placing my tomatoes at the surface. The only ones I will be sinking are the ones that I put in the containers made with my potting soil that I like to reuse and revamp. So if you want to learn more on how to revamp your potting soil, this is the video you should go check out. Geek Crew, thanks for stopping in and I will see you in the next video. Bye.